overall buckling. So last lecture we have discussed the local buckling, local buckling of stiffened elements and unstiffened elements. So I have also explained to you that in I section, unstiffened element is flange and stiffened elements are the web. And stiffened elements are the elements with, which are connected from both sides. And unstiffened elements are the element which are only connected from one side and free from the other end. So in case of I section, half flange is the unstiffened element. So we are checking the B over T ratio of this unstiffened element, which is half flange width divided by thickness of flange. And similarly, if we want to check the B over T ratio for this stiffened element, which is web, that would be equal to B is equal to height of web and uh, thickness of the web divided by thickness of web. In overall buckling, actually overall buckling takes place if the slenderness ratio is larger. So in compression member AISC recommends that the overall slenderness ratio should not be more than 200. But anyhow, any section, uh, for example, here you can see this I section. So in this I section, you can see that uh, this, it is having the length, but some particular length. So its length about X direction and Y direction may be the same if the bonding conditions are uniform or identical about both axes. But this section is not having the same moment of inertia about X axis or Y axis. Or you can say that uh, this section is not having the same surrenderness ratio about X axis and uh, Y axis. So in this case, a, a column section, it will always buckle or bend about the axis for which the slenderness ratio is maximum. So we have seen in our previous slides and we will also see in our upcoming slide that slenderness ratio is equal to KL over R. So K is the effective length factor, L is the length and R is the radius of gyration about any axis. So more will be the moment of inertia about any axis more will be the radius of gyration. So slenderness ratio is inversely proportional to the radius of gyration. So it means that if the radius of gyration will be maximum about any axis, the slenderness ratio about that axis will be minimum. Or if Rx or Ry, these are the radii of gyration about X axis and Y axis. So whichever is minimum, the slenderness ratio about that axis will be maximum and a column section will tend to buckle about that axis. So when I talk about the buckling, so buckling means that this is the X axis. So X axis we are always referring as a major axis. So X axis, major axis is the one about which the moment of inertia is maximum or radius of gyration is maximum. So Y axis is referred as a minor axis. So minor axis is the one about which the moment of inertia is minimum or less or radius of gyration is less. So here you have to understand the bending about. So when I discuss the, uh, I speak the word bending about. So the section will bend about X axis. Bending about X axis mean that the displacement will occur in y direction, which is referred as translation. If the bending occur about x axis, it means that the center point of this section will move in y direction. So you can use any one of the terminology. So similarly, if I speak about the word bending about y axis, a section will bend about y axis mean that the center point is will move in x direction. So if displacement is taken place in x direction, or here it is referred as z x direction, then it is bending about y axis. So you can either uh, maybe remember uh, this as a bending about the axis or displacement in any direction. So what I want to say that if the bending or buckling takes place about x axis, the section 
will tend to move in y direction so how i can control the buckling or bending about x axis if i constrain this section in y direction so similarly if a section will bend about y axis it means that the section will tend to displace in x direction so i need to provide the bracing or constrain the movement of the mid span in x direction so the bracing point may be different uh, about both axes so what we do so if the slenderness ratio about x axis is less and slenderness ratio about y axis is more so it means that a column will always tend to buckle about y axis or it tend to displace in x direction so we need to provide the bracing in x direction so you will see in upcoming slide so here you can see, see that this is buckling about major axis so actually you you cannot perceive because this is the line diagram so it is difficult to get the idea from here so that's why i have explained from this diagram so how we can control the bracing so for this section actually this section this is the major axis and the axis along the web is the y axis so this section both end can be considered as a pin end so if this section will tend to bend or buckle about the major axis major axis mean that so this mid span tend to move along y direction so no bracing is used in y direction so i can say that about the x axis the total length will be considered as a unbraced length and both end condition can be k value can be considered as a one because i can consider top end and bottom end as a pin but here if i will consider the bending or buckling about y axis it mean that the center point it will tend to move in x direction so to control the bending or buckling in x direction or about y axis we have braced it we have maybe connected with a steel section or steel rod and other end of steel rod is connected with a rigid support this mean that now this center point it cannot move in x direction or it cannot buckle about y axis now this point bracing point is also assumed as a pin end so in that case what we will uh, do that we will assume that the column is divided into two segments about about y axis so about x axis column is acting as a one unit but about y axis the column is behaving as a one unit Gentlemen, I have to take a short break for a while. No bracing is provided in y direction, so it means that about x axis, talking about x axis, I need to consider total length. And bracing is provided along x direction means about y direction. So now I need to consider the length between the four. and bracing point because bracing point will also be considered as a support so it mean that unbraced length about y axis will be equal to the maybe half length half length mean because bracing is provided in center so unbraced length about y axis will be half length and bracing point is considered as a pin so it mean that about y axis a segment between top end and this bracing point will buckle as a individual component or individual column and similarly buckling between bracing point to the other support will also occur as a individual component so we will uh, study in detail when we will start design phase so what is the unsupported length so unsupported length actually in case of column we need to uh, mention about both axis in x direction and also in y direction just like in the previous case i told you that if we have provided the bracing then unbraced length about x direction and y direction may be different 
so we are mentioning the bracing uh, in a uh, unbraced length about x direction as a lux and bracing about y direction as a lu y so similarly uh, in this case you can see that so lux is the total length unbraced lu means unbraced length about x axis is total length and luy unbraced length about y axis is the largest segment about the y axis which is lu y is equal to total length divided by 2 so lux and luy are the unbraced length about x direction and y direction so a different value of unfortunate length may exist in different direction and must be used to calculate the corresponding phenomenal circle just like in the previous cases unfortunate length may be different if we have provided the bracing so why we are interested to uh, calculate unbraced length because we need to compute the phenomenal ratio about both axes x axis and y axis then a column will always buckle about the axis for which the phenomenal ratio will be a maximum to calculate unsupported length of column in a particular direction only the corresponding supports and braces are to be considered neglecting the bracing preventing the buckling in other direction so i told you that if i want to uh, compute the unbraced length about x axis so i will not consider this bracing because this bracing will not be effective in controlling the buckling about x axis so this bracing is only effective in controlling the buckling or bending about y axis so effective length so if we are multiplying the unbraced length with effective length factor effective length factor is a ratio between the effective length over total length so effective length column the length of the column corresponding to one half sine wave of the buckle shape is referred as a effective length or you can say that that is the length between two point of contra flexure so here you will see that what is effective length so effective length in this case you can see that this is the half sine wave so half sine wave is the length between this port top port to the center point so buckling of steel column buckling is a sudden later bending produced by axial loading due to initial imperfection out of straightness initial curvature or bending produced by simultaneous bending of moment so i have already explained this in my previous lecture so buckling is a sudden out of plane plane bending of a line element due to axial compressive force so this is always due to the axial compressive forces so sudden lateral bending of line element or the column due to axial compressive force is referred as a buckling bending is gradual process it is due to the transversal loading bending occur in beam and buckling occurs in column that is sudden sudden i have already explained that if on the column we are keep on increasing the load column will be remain straight it will not bend in later direction but suddenly at one particular load it will suddenly bend in the later direction and it will straight unlike in the beam when we are increasing the later load so deflection is keep on increasing with the increase of the load value until we are approaching to failure so buckling is a sudden out of plane bending due to axial compressive force and buckling will always occur about the axis for which the slenderness ratio is maximum so here chances of buckling are directly related with the slenderness ratio so these are slenderness ratio so more is the slenderness ratio more are the chances of buckling it means that the slenderness ratio is the function of three parameters k value which is effective length factor l total length unbraced length if we are multiplying the length unbraced length with the k value that will become the effective length and r is the radius of carriage 
so if we want to reduce the hidden f ratio then we need to increase k value sorry reduce the k value reduce the unbraced length or we need to increase the radius of gyration the radius of gyration is computed as equal to moment of inertia divided by a under root so it's mean that that's why sometimes we need a built up section because in built up section why we are making built up section just to increase the radius of gyration or moment of inertia about the weak axis so effective length factor which depends upon end condition of the column you will see in the next slide so what is the k value for uh, different end condition an unbraced length of column lu about any particular direction in strong or weak direction is called the unbraced length so whichever gives the more answer we have also always need to consider the value uh, which is maximum so it means that we will compute hidden f ratio about x axis and also about y axis so that will be kx luf over rx is equal to hidden f ratio about x axis if we are using ky luy divided by ry that will be hidden f ratio about y axis so radius of gyration or which may be rx or ry strong or weak strong or in weak direction for uni axially or by axially symmetrical cross section and least value so that will be less Starting lecture, I think recording is already on. So, okay. okay, can you see the slide here? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, before the introduction, so I was at point three. So I was just explaining that uh, R value we can take about any axis R X or R Y, and for single angle we have to. Uh, consider the rj okay please gentlemen please mute your mic please all of you please you are requested to mute your mic so we have to uh, consider the following important point in when we are computing the critical schnell s ratio critical schnell s ratio is the one which is maximum about any axis so buckling will take place about a direction for which the corresponding schnell s ratio is maximum i have already clear up this for unbraced compression member consisting of single angle that total length and rg are used to calculate an annexation so for single angle we always uh, take rg value from section property table for steel braces bracing is considered the most effective if tension is produced in them due to buckling so here uh, also i have explained to you that we have provided bracing so you will see that this bracing so in this bracing system uh, this is provided about y axis so actually why we have to provide bracing on the both side because if the buckling occurs in this direction then this bracing will be in tension so this is controlling the uh, movement of this tensile point in this direction and this bracing will be in compression so we are assuming that this is not affected so this is not resisting any lateral movement but this bracing will be affected if column tend to bend on the other direction so that's why we provide the bracing on the both side because we do not know that whether the column is bending on one direction or in other direction so accordingly in which direction it is bending so one of the bracing which will be in tension it will be affected and the bracing which will be a in compression we will ignore it so braces that provide resistance by bending or less effect are less effective and braces having compression are almost ineffective because of their small cross section because if the bracing system will be in compression so their tendon ratio will be very large so we assume that they are not providing any resistance so we ignore them the braces is considered effective it's it's one end is connected with stable force or rigid force which is not undergoing buckling so 
I will explain also this point. The braces are usually provided in clients to the member, main member of the structure, starting from mid span to the end of adjacent column. Okay, for this point number E, I have already explained. So in this case, this one end is connected with the column, and other is connected with the form four. So this end cannot move. This must be connected with the rigid force. So if this end is also moving, so it means that this member, bracing member, will move as a whole. So it cannot control the buckling. So other end might be connected with some rigid support or rigid uh, uh, end. And I have already shown you some diagram in my uh, picture in my introductory lecture. So in frame structure, we provide bracing as a cross bracing diagonal, which is connecting at the one corner uh, of the steel uh, column and beam to the other bottom corner of uh, beam and column connection. So because of bracing is most effective in tension, it usually provided on both sides to prevent buckling on either side. Just I explained it. Bracing can be provided to prevent buckling along weak axis. So tenderness pressure should be calculated by using KY. So KY is the effective length factor. So we consider the bonding condition only about Y axis and unbraced length along weak axis and RY. So in the previous uh, image, you have seen that we provide the bracing about weak axis because about the weak axis, the tenderness pressure is maximum. So how we can uh, uh, control the tenderness ratio because we have reduced the unbraced length to the half. Bracing can also be provided to prevent buckling along strong axis. So in that case, if we want to provide the bracing in strong axis, so we have to use KX, effective length factor about X axis, unbraced length about X axis, and radius of gyration about X axis. And this thing I have already explained. So wherever we have provided the bracing. So bracing end will be considered as a hinge spore or pin spore. So reason is that the rotation becomes free because the bracing is only controlling the uh, translation. They are not controlling the rotation. So effective length factor, I have just explained, it is a ratio between effective length to the total length. So this gives the ratio of the length of half sine wave. So it provides the length of the column corresponding to half sine wave. Half sine wave means that what is the projection of the length between half sine wave. Half sine mean, wave means that that is the length between two points of contrast like here. So you will see in next slide. So this depends upon the end condition of column and the fact that whether the side sway is permitted or not. What is side sway? I will also explain in the upcoming slide. So greater is the K value, greater will be the effective length. So if we want to reduce the effective length, so we need to reduce the K value. So we will see that in what uh, different cases, or in, in what type of the end condition, what K value we have to use. So uh, effective length can be computed as K multiplied by LU. If we are multiplying the effective length factor with unbraced length so we can compute the le value so in other words you can say that effective length factor is equal to effective length divided by le so k value is ranging between 0.5 to 1 where the side sway is prevented and for the cases where the side sway is allowed then the k value will be more than so first of all, let me explain what is the side sway. So here, first of all, I will give you the buckling. Simple buckling is that you can see this is the column and we are considering both end as a pin. So if we are applying the load, so the sports cannot move in any direction. So sports are stable. So it means that the buckling only occur within column or within the compression member. So the sports will remain intact, stable, they are not moving. So this is the normal buckling, buckling without side sway. But in second case, you see that 
in this case both ends are pin or if you can see that both one end is pin other is fixed you can consider so when we are applying the load so sports are is also moving in the later direction and the buckling in column also takes place so if the sports move relative to each other along with the buckling in the column this is referred as a buckling with side sway so side sway you can say that that is the relative movement of sports or the end of the column along with buckling in the column so normal buckling only the column between the sports it buckle or bend in the later direction and sports position remain intact or firm stable but in side sway the sports they are also moving relative to each other maybe one end or other end along with bending in the column so that is called side sway so i will come back to the previous so what is the side sway and what are the reason any appreciable lateral or sideward movement of top of uh, top of a vertical column relative to its bottom is called side sway so normally the bottom end remains stable and the top end is moved so we can also say that relative movement of the uh, ends of the column along with the buckling is referred as side sway so if side sway is possible or it can occur k value is increasing so it vary may be more than one so what is the reason of side sway so there are four reasons so if both column they are having different length for example in this uh, uh, story these two column uh, they are having same cross section but they are having different length so if they are having same length the same cross section it mean that they will have same radius of gyration moment of inertia and end condition but length are different so slenderness ratio of this column will be more and slenderness ratio of this column will be less it mean that this column will buckle earlier when this column will buckle so due to buckling of this column the end can move in this direction so which is causing the lateral movement of this top end of this column other reason is that in this uh, story single story this is one bay structure bay is the spacing between uh, one beam and two column so here length of both column is same but the cross section is twice or double so you can say moment of inertia of this column is double so it means that its radius of gyration will also be more so slenderness ratio of this column will be less as compared to this so this column will buckle first and this column will remain stable when this column tend to buckle so this end can tend to move in later direction which is causing side sway third case is unsymmetrical loading load is not acting in the center just on this one hand it means that only buckling may occur in this column when the buckling tend to occur in this column it will it will cause the sideward movement and the fourth condition is that if any lateral load is acting due to lateral load the top and they can move uh, in one direction or they can move horizontally uh, relative to the bottom end so these are the side sway so how we can prevent the side sway so side sway can be prevented in rcc structure by providing shear wall actually what is shear wall shear wall is the reinforced concrete wall rcc where we are providing the reinforcement in the wall and we pour the concrete so we normally provide this wall along the periphery of building structure so uh, the moment of inertia of the wall along the length direction of the wall is very high so in this way they are controlling the lateral movement of uh, rcc structure but in case of steel structure we provide the cross bracing just like you have seen some picture in our introductory lecture so fixing the top of the frame with adjoining rigid structure we can fix the top end of the structure by some bracing system the other end of the bracing is connected with some firm support so normally the shear wall uh, lift well you see you can see that in multi story building they are we are using lift so lift is uh, provided in a lift well you can see that the walls of the lift well are rcc so they behave as a shear wall or backbone of structure which are controlling the 
lateral movement or the side sway of arc is structure shear wall is a structural wall that resists shear forces resulting from the applied transfer load in its own plane and in, and uh, they increase the stability of frame in case of steel structure we either provide diagonal bracing or longitudinal bracing longitudinal bracing you have seen uh, in, in in previous slides where we have provided the longitudinal bracing in a column and diagonal bracing you have already seen in our introductory lecture so unbraced frame they are also referred as a rigid frame so rigid frame where the bracing is uh, the lateral movement is controlled by the resistance provided by beam and column section by themselves so i can show you this brace and unbraced frame again so maybe in it was in my very first lecture so i would like to show you again in this example you will see that this is our unbraced frame which is rigid frame the lateral movement is controlled by bending resistance of beam and column so the section cross section dimension of the beam and column are larger in rigid frame but here the lateral movement is controlled by cross bracing or diagonal bracing so they are provided in opposite direction in alternative panel if this end tend to move in this direction so this bracing which is in tension will be affected and this bracing will be in compression that will be not affected if the bearing tend to move in this direction then this bracing will be affected so here are the k values for different type of the end condition so if you open the page number 103 on your lrfd manual so you are provided with a table for different type of the effective length factor uh, for, for different value of the effective length factor for different end condition so if both ends are pin then pin mean that movement will be zero because this end is free to rotate but there will be no translation so movement is zero so this length when it will bend this will make a half sine wave full sine wave if it is having two crest and two trough point so this is the length of the column between or cross corresponding to the half sine wave so here effective length will be equal to total length or we can say that k value is equal to 1 for practical if there is no side sway so if both ends are fixed so we know that at both hand so there is no rotation so there will be you can say a negative bending movement at fixed end so these are the point of contrast like here where the negative bending movement changes to the positive so at this point movement is zero so between one point of contrast like here to the other point of contrast like here this is half sine wave so the length of the column corresponding to half sine wave is the l an experiment suggest that or prove that if both ends are fixed then this le is equal to k into l and the k value is equal to half so effective length is equal to half of total length if both ends are fixed with no side sway so k value is equal to half if both ends are fixed so but theoretical value is 0.5 but in practical cases or in design of compression member we may consider the a value on the higher side as 0.65 similarly if one end is actually this end supposed to be fixed i will change the condition if one end is fixed and other end is pin then k value is equal to 0.7 and le at this point moment is zero and at this spot moment is also zero at roller spot 
for kin score effective length is equal to k into l and the k value is equal to 0.7 if one and pin one six then k value is equal to 0.7 but for design purposes we may use 0.8 similarly if one end is six and other is three, in that case, if the it will deflect. So this deflection, so this deflected portion is equal to the quarter sine wave, quarter, one fourth of sine wave. So if we are taking the mirror image on the other side, so we always say that length corresponding to half sine wave. If we are completing this sine or the deflected shape into the half sine wave, then this LE will be the effective length, and K value will be equal to two. It means that in case if one end is three, one six, effective length is equal to the twice of total length. So if both ends are six and side sway is allowed present, then K value is equal to one point two. Both ends, sorry, both end pin and side sway is allowed, then K value is equal to one. And for the practical reason, we can consider as a one point. If one and six, one pin and side sway is allowed, then K value will be equal to two. And for the practical, we can also say as a two. Actually, in case of RCC structure. We can actually provide the fixed-ended and pin-ended condition by monolithic uh, uh, scoring of the concrete. Monolithic joint. Monolithic joint means that we are scoring the concrete at the joint, beam and arm joint at the same time. But in case of our steel structure, normally we connect the bottom part of the section with a steel plate, and this steel plate is connected with a column pedestal or a platform. RCC platform. So, in case of steel structure, we can actually provide pin and it and six and it score. So, in this arrangement, we can see that we have cut some middle portion of the web, we have punched the hole, and we have provided the bolt in this center. So, in this case, if the column is bending to the either side, so this end, if it is bending in the side. So this end is compressing the pedestal, so this end can uplift. So if this can uplift on the any side, so this type of the end condition is assumed as a pin. Pin means that the bottom end cannot move in any direction, maybe in x direction and in y direction, but it can free to rotate. On the other hand, this type of the end condition we have welded by I section with a steel plate, and then we have punched the hole. At the corner, and then we have bolted it with the anchor bolt with the pedestal. Okay, if if this column is bending about any axis, so this end it cannot uplift. So it is not uplifting. Mean that so in this case the tension will produce in this column or in this anchor bolt, which is preventing the lateral movement or rotation of this column in any direction. So this type of the a base plate connection is referred as a fixed end. Condition. So this is pin and this is fixed. So at the top end, we have already seen that at the top end of the column, we can also actually provide the pin-ended and fixed-ended condition, just like I have explained in this slide. So if we are connecting the web and flange of beam to the column, then this end condition for the beam is referred as a uh, fixed force. But column the sport will be different, so we will see that how we can consider the type of the end condition for the top of column. Actually, this condition is only for beam. So this is a chart that similar chart is given on page number one zero three on LRFD design eight. So you can easily consider that uh, chart wrapper for the solution of problem. So partially restrained column. Okay, here what I would like to explain. Actually, in this frame, if I talk about this column, 
this bottom corner so this is a three story four bay frame structure bay is the opening between beam and column so this is bay 1 bay 2 bay 3 and bay 4 so this frame structure is having four bay and three story if i want to design this column this edge column so what will be effective length factor of this column how i can compute actually the bottom bottom part i directly know because at the bottom uh, the bottom end of this column is independent it is not connected with any beam or column so this is column may be bottom part is connected with the uh, concrete base either by the fixed end condition or pin end condition the end condition i have already shown you in previous slide so but what is about this end the top end is connected with one beam and one top corner so in that case it is difficult to perceive the type of end condition i will come up to this beam later but first of all i will explain for this so this column a b i want to com compute the strenuous ratio of this column a and b so actually if uh, this end of both end of this columns are not independent independent mean that they are connected with two beam and one column from the bottom and similarly the top end is also connected with beam from two side and also the column on the top side so if the column is connected by some other structure member so in that case so this end condition will be partially constrained condition partially fixed so for the partially fixed so it means the partially fixed mean that the behavior will be within the fixed and the simple scope so k value will be between 0.5 to 1 but what will be the exact value that we have to consider 0.6 0.9 0.95 or 1 so that can be computed by a parameter which is referred as a psi value or g value so say psi or g value is computed by this formula so this formula is equal to ei over l actually ei over l is the flexure stiffness of any structure component so what we do we compute the g value or phi value for the top end and for the bottom end you can refer even top end as a b and bottom end as a a so whatever is the designation you want to use so we are computing g value which is equal to the summation of flexure stiffness of all the column which are meeting at this joint so there are two column which are meeting at this joint one column from the top and one column from the bottom so it mean that eil of value of the top column plus ei over l value of the bottom column divided by the summation of flexure stiffness of all the beam which are uh, joined or connected at this end a so which is equal to summation ei e i over l value of this beam on the one side and e i l over beam on the other side so we will compute this g value on both end and a and and b so once we are computing this value a and b for the both end so here uh, if you are opening say number 104 on your l r f d design a so you will see that two charts are given just like i have presented here so two charts one chart is for brace frame brace frame in that side sway is allowed and other is for unbrace frame or side sway is not prevented so you can see that on this chart we are having three vertical axis or three scales where some particular values are mentioned you can consider any one as axis on the maybe left side or right side as a ga mark the ga value on one axis and gb value on the other axis you can switch ga and gb value after marking the value when you will join both axis or both value by a line wherever this line will intersect the middle axis that value will be the effective length factor that you will consider for that uh, story so second chart is for on side sway allowed so i will show you the actual 
maybe it's a table so these are these are the some excel table so this table for the top this is for side tray prevented so you will mark g a value on this axis g b value on this axis and then you will join the both point and wherever this line is intersecting this yeah. middle yeah. Uh, middle uh, axis that will be our k value so here psi value or g value is mentioned over here e i over l of all the columns meeting at point a and e i over l of beam which are being uh, connected at one point okay what will be about this end if i am considering this column for this column at this point only one column is coming from the top and one column is coming from the bottom it means that in order to compute this parameter so you will have summation of ei able e i over l value of this top column e i over l value of this bottom column divided by e i over l value of this beam only because only one beam is connected but what is about this bottom end okay for this bottom end it is not connected with any any beam or column on either side so for this case you will consider this table for bottom end if bottom end is hinged for then g value you can consider 10 for side tray prevented or brace column g and psi value can be assumed as a 20 if side tray is allowed for if you are directly on the hinge or fixed type of beam if bottom end is fixed then g or psi value will be 0.5 if the bottom end is fixed and side tray is allowed then g value will be 1 so here you need to consider the charts accordingly top chart is used for side tray prevented and bottom chart is used for side tray allowed so for side tray allowed k value is ranging from 1 to 10 so an infinity and for side tray allowed k value is ranging from 0.5 to 1 so it means that we will solve one numerical where we have to use this type of the so i will stop my lecture over here so if you are having any question uh, regarding today's lecture so you can ask me gentlemen i i need to clear it up i see that many students they come online after half of the lecture during between in the first 35 minute attendance was just 26 and now at the moment is 46 i am telling you that i am computing it total time total time for which a student was present so later on please do not complain regarding your wf grade or if you are getting less mark in class participation and most of the time you do not participate so If there is no any question, I would like to conclude the lecture. Inshallah, we will see you at 1 p.m. in the time class.